So hello, my name is Bianca O'Grady. I'm a freelance science journalist and author and occasional broadcaster. Um, I've always loved science and I've always loved writing, so it was kind of a natural career for me to fall into writing about science. Um, and I started this, I, I studied science at university and I was editor of the student newspaper and that was when I discovered that there was actually a career that combined science and writing. And so that was a bit of a light bulb moment for me and I haven't really looked back since then. So I um, started working as an editor of a children's science magazine when I was at CSIRO, which was a, a really fantastic crash course in the challenges of communicating science uh, and the complex kind of concepts in science to a very young audience, because our audience at the time was seven to 11 year olds. So trying to explain what nuclear power was to a seven year old was a really good learning experience in terms of trying to write about something that's not only scientifically complex, but also ethically complex. So um, after that I became a journalist with CSIRO for a while and then I was um, became a medical reporter because my parents are both doctors so I've always had a fascination for health as well so I was a medical reporter for a few years and then decided that actually I wanted to be writing about everything in science not just medicine um, so I became a freelance journalist and so that was over a decade ago and since then I've had the privilege of writing across the full length and breadth of science um, pretty much everything except I think maths I haven't ever really written anything about mathematics but um, I absolutely love what I do and I, I think it's it is a privilege to be in this situation where I can ring up a scientist and they take the time out of their day to tell me about what they do and this might be their life's work and their passion and I get to just ring up and so say so what are you working on and what's happened and I'm, you know look over their shoulder and point at things and say what does that do and so really it's just me being a very curious nosy nerd and I get to indulge that on a daily basis um, but I think there's also a lot of responsibility that comes with writing about science you know when you look at um, the front page of a newspaper or a news website, probably around a third to a half of the stories that you will see every day will have something to do with science, whether that be you know, energy security or agricultural issues or antibiotic resistance or obviously climate change is a huge one, pollution, you know, artificial intelligence. There are so many aspects of our day-to-day -day life now that are that are, you know are embedded in science and really as a general public to be able to make the kind of decisions, the informed decisions that we need to make about these technologies and whether we want to use them and what the risks are. We need to we need to have a science literate, not just science literate public, but we also need a public that has a sense of agency in that science. You know, science has long been viewed as this kind of arcane, ivory tower pursuit that was happening over there and the general public wasn't really engaged with it. And I don't think we can afford to do that anymore. So I see part of what I do as a science journalist and a science writer as being to help the public, uh, and that includes myself, to make those sorts of informed decisions. And those decisions may be made at the ballot box and they may be made with a wallet. Um, but those decisions have the potential to transform not just our way of life, but our industry, our society, and ultimately our planet. So, you know, it is there's a lot of responsibility that comes with ensuring that people do have uh, as much information as they need to make those decisions. Um, but ultimately, I do what I do because I love it. You know, I, the books that I've uh, been involved with have, have come about because I had a question and I wanted to know the answer. And so, 80,000 words later, I had an answer. <laughs> so it's been it's been a real um, a real journey in that. Um, but I I think. You know, yes, science writing and science journalism are, have a particular skill set that is involved, which in, you know, which doesn't mean you have to have a science degree or be a scientist. But it's about understanding the nature of evidence and the fact that science doesn't ever prove anything. It's a it's a constant courtroom drama with new you know new evidence and new witnesses always being brought in, and and so that information is always changing, it's always updating and so you know what might be a cure for cancer one week might turn out to be a failure the next week or what might be a random slime mould discovered in a basin might turn out to be the next big antibiotic, you know it's constantly evolving and, and I think that's a really fundamental aspect of science that uh, science journalists sort of have to really struggle to convey and I think often is missed in a lot of coverage of science. Um, 
so and also just sort of I guess understanding scientists you know who are a, an extraordinary and passionate bunch um, do what they do spend their life asking a question not even knowing if it's the right question or what the answer is going to be but they just keep doing it because they have a love and they have a curiosity and um, so being able to be allowed into that domain is, is an extraordinary thing I'm very grateful for it.